Hello, this is a Bluthner style seven grand piano, made in 1905, 190 centimeters long, six foot three inches long. Just come into stock, so we want to assess the piano to see what uh, we would need to do to try and improve it. First of all, the casework, the veneer is very good. Not that much veneer is missing. Uh, in fact, no veneer that I could see at all, but it is faded and uh, hasn't been repolished or anything. I think it's all the original condition, actually. So looking around the side, the legs are always much darker than the rest of the piano. If it's repolished, we try and perhaps uh, make them a little bit lighter just to match the rest of the wood. But on most grand pianos have darker legs. And the top of the piano, um, you can see that very interesting veneer, as Blutners do have. It's one of the nicest veneers, and we love repolishing them. Um, so the whole of it looks as though it's been closed, because if you look at the other side, then uh, that's where it's been closed you can see it's not faded at all whereas here it's faded so that's typical fading over the years this side looks quite dark as well um, and the music stand has faded so uh, that's interesting because it looks like it's been closed and yet the music stands faded so maybe it's been i don't know anyway and uh, looking at the rest of the piano that, that, that fall is very good there's such a uh, beautiful pianos bootners we're really keen on them there's an original from dublin there i think that's presumably the uh, original seller and we have another sticker on the other side let's see what that says and that's also dublin kramer wooden company kramer's a piano uh, makers as well so i wonder if it was them and looking at the pedals they're nice and low um reasonable legroom i think it's 61 we'll look at the worksheet later anyway um most of it i've got written on there so i won't go on too long so the inside of the piano, the, the frame is in good condition, um, slightly mottled there. So obviously we can fully restore this piano, just trying to decide what to do. Um, all the strings are, are there, there's no strings missing, and they're all original strings, which is uh, encouraging. So we could keep the piano as it is. It's a m remarkable how a piano of that age it can sound so beautiful, but it does. We'll listen to the tone in a second. Let's have a look at the tuning pins too. By the way, no cracks on the on the soundboard. Blue soundboards don't tend to crack. Um, uh, the cracks, as we said before, don't necessarily mean you've lost any of the tone, but it does indicate drying out. But blue, the ones I've assessed don't seem to have cracked soundboards as much as, say, Beckstein or Steinway. And by the way, Blue Grands um, have this badge on the, we call it logo, and the serial number underneath. If it's not there, there's always the serial number inside the back of the, um, if you pull the action out, you'll see it there. Or nearly always anyway, so hardly ever seen it without. Um, tuning pins are tight, and they don't actually feel small as originals, but interesting enough. So maybe it has been restrung at some stage, but if it was, it was Blutner style, because we said before, this coning is typical Blutner. I haven't got any other pianos to compare it with all, all the time at the moment, sorry about that. But um, other videos will show that too. The key tops are original libraries. There's one key top missing here. We can try and match as well as possible. I think we can get a reasonably good match. We've got a huge number of spares, so uh, there's a little chip there. But generally, they're not too worn down, which indicates not too much wear. And the pedals as well, as we said before, that indicates wear, and there's not, hum not a huge amount of wear. But the ha having said that, the hammers are worn, uh, obviously never been changed. So a reasonable amount of wear, but not so much that uh, the keys are dipping, which you do get sometimes. And uh, that key top's missing, obviously, as I say, we'll try and replace that. And they don't look as though they're coming off at all. Uh, we check the key tops always by touching them, see if they're c coming off. So they could re be replaced, especially if we're going to export. Nowadays, we do uh, replace a lot more because of that. We can't really export ivory very easily now. Now the actions of Luther Patent, as uh, we mentioned before, is typical up to 1925, and uh, which is... I think it's 1925. If you're in the trade, like to know the know the exact crossover when they started to put roller actions. That would be useful. There's three, uh, two two action parts missing there. Actually, there the action parts are there. So the, um, the what we call the um, the abstract is still there. Strange name, but that's what they call them. And uh, the it's just the hammer. So we can we can certainly replace those. That's not going to be a problem. Well, the top part of the abstract's not there. So. Um, those two need replacing. We could replace the whole action, and um, that's an option. We've done that not very often, and it is done, and successfully done, if you put a new, normal roller action in. So if you love the boot the tone, as so many do, and we do too, then you want the normal style action, that's possible. 
But the Volition Patient Action performs beautifully, but doesn't repeat as well as the modern action. I've mentioned this many times on other videos. So uh, this hammer's broken off here. I think that's probably me. It was a little bit high up when I pulled the action out. You have to be extremely careful. I mentioned this before on a video, and others of you said that happens to you. So I'm so grateful it's not just me who makes the silly mistake. Uh, hammers must be down. Sometimes when they're touching each other, they're slightly up. Maybe that's what happened. I thought I'd looked at them all carefully, but there we go. Anyway, um, the hammers are quite worn, uh, not as worn as we do get on some Blutners. It's just possible to reface this. Um, if you haven't got an option, if you've got a Blutner Grand, then refacing that, uh, obviously trying to get a point to it, will make it sound better. But um, really, they're a bit on the soft side, and we would like to replace those with good quality Arbel or uh, Blutner Arbel and, or Renner hammers, which we will do. Um, there's a possibility of replacing the whole action, and that is something that we will consider as well. It has been done before. We have, uh, it, it is very successful when it's done. It takes, obviously, costs a lot of money, but the original patent Blutner Act feels really good, but if you want a modern action, if you're studying the piano, you prefer a modern action, then that is possible. Obviously, uh, time-consuming and therefore expensive, and the action itself is expensive. That's the serial number at the back of the piano, in all Blutners, or nearly all Blutners, have this number right at the back, so that's useful if you've lost the number on the top. So here's the worksheet summary and um, describing the piano, bought from the furniture trade, so um, it's a trade piano, effectively. Pitch is 427, it shows you how long ago it was. It's, it's remarkably stable, being 427, it's almost in tune, as you'll hear in a minute. I won't play well, I won't speak when I'm playing the piano, but I'll demonstrate all the different areas of the piano as much as I can and uh, um, so you can hear the tone typical um, so consistent Blutons are really um, so we got original strings uh, I'm not inclined to fully restore this piano if it's got all the original strings uh, at least if they're replaced they're replaced exactly as the originals were I think they probably are original so the tuning pins are a bit bigger than I expected on original strings um, so the key dips right a bit low for that is typical Blutner. Uh, we tend to make that a bit greater because people are used to more key dip. Hammer blows fine, but we would change the hammers anyway. So there's a bit a lot of work to do if we change the hammers of reweighting and so on. Um, so woodwork's good, but it needs re, it's faded and needs repolishing. So I hope that's helpful. Um, we can either replace the hammers and regulate, or we can fit the new roller action, which is something we will consider doing. Though it's only the two bottom parts of the action are missing, the rest of the action is in very good condition. So uh, not inclined to do that unless uh, we really decide we want a piano that's like that, so you can try it out, so it's been replaced. Replacing the action with a, a modern roller action isn't an easy job. We work together with someone who used to work with for Blutners and do lots of them, so that's how we will get that done hopefully as well as possible. Thank you very much for listening. I'm just going to play the piano and I'm going to play in different areas and then play the whole piano to get some idea of tone. But uh, you'll have heard many Blutner's grands before that we've played. So thank you so much for listening. Um, if you're interested in the piano, please do write um, to us, info at robertspianos.com and uh, tell us what, you, what you'd like us to do. Thank you.
So it's just over a year since the piano's been in and we've decided to do an actual conversion. So that's converting a booth of patent action into uh, a modern lever roller action, like uh, every other p modern piano really. Uh, so it's meant replacing the key bed and the top action. And of course that means replacing the ivories and they are now a modern key covering, high quality, um, done as well as we can obviously. And you know, the fronts are also changed. So the action's like uh, any other top quality Renner action. Renner's the top quality action maker in Europe, um, we believe, and uh, have Arbel hammers on. So it's Renner combination with Renner action and Arbel hammers, which are exactly what they do for Blutner. So you ask Arbel to do hammers suitable for a, a Blutner Grand, and um, it's really as high quality as we can get it. So all the regulations been done, and. Uh, it plays extremely sensitively. Now one of the main differences between the booth and patent action and the, the roller action is that you, you've got a spring here to, to hold the hammer near the string so you don't have to take the key all the way up. Now you don't on, the, on a well-regulated boot and patent act either but this has a little bit more control. You can repeat without having to lift the key right up to the top and it, hold, it holds the hammer, basically the repetition lever holds the hammer near the string and uh, you can see the spring here. This is a Steinway Yamaha type of style, butterfly style we mentioned recently in another video and uh, there's the roller. So it's either called a roller action or lever action and uh, most pianos are, are with that style of action or similar. I decided to make a new worksheet because look quite a lot of things have changed really. Um, we haven't pitch phrased yet, that's something I'm going to have to do and hopefully won't break any strings in doing so. If the uh, pressure points are lubricated, then hopefully that won't happen. And uh, new arbel hammers, new, so new action, um, the key to leg room, and 6.5 that's meant to say it's a pedal height, and you could definitely lift up the casters um, by an inch or so, and still pedals won't be too high, or so, or by a centimetre or so, sorry, not an inch, and then that'll, that'll be give you a bit more legroom. Not 6 61.5 isn't too bad anyway, it's quite a reasonable legroom if you're a tall person. So the decision to make, if, do we repolish this piano or if you have a piano that you'd like your action converted on and obviously yeah, you might just want that done without repolishing. This is a very tasteful veneer as you get on Blutners and when that's redone if we do repolish it, it'll be showing a lot more contrast than the veneers. We've shown on other videos of our repolishing, and my colleague um, manages to get as good a contrast as possible. So you can see how, how tasteful this veneer is, and well worth doing, really. The other question, if we're going to repolish the piano, we could just clean the inside, and it'll look very respectable, um, or we could fully redo the inside of the piano, that's the acoustic side as uh, we've shown on many other videos, to redo all of the insides of the expensive. Not, not necessary to do, the action's been done so we could just do that and then repolish or we could uh, make the inside as good looking as possible. So that's the kind of decision to make. So, um, so it's been uh, patent to, conversion from patent to lever action is the main work that we've done here so far and you can see the the action's weighting has been set. That's 47 grams would be a normal sort of uh, down weight and then very low up weight, 20 grams. That gives it a beautifully smooth feel. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed trying the piano out since it's been done and uh, the, the less off and so on has been done as accurately as possible. So regulation is as good as you can get and just like a new piano really. And you've got the advantage of the extraordinary beauty of sound and the modern touch as well. So ideal piano really. So now that the action's been converted and the hammers have been replaced, you've got a very controllable touch and the hammers give it an even tone throughout. most controllable actions I've ever played. And such an even tone 
The break points on the Bluton is, you can hardly tell where they are. So this is actually from B to B flat. Just shows you how high quality manufacturer it is. There's a treble break point and another treble break point and really you can't distinguish them. They're no different, so it blends perfectly. We have got the original strings on this piano and we'd like to keep them if we can. It just gives so much authentic sound really. But uh, if we have to restring, if we find we're breaking quite a few strings on the pitch raise, then we would restring. Hopefully we won't have to do that, so the next task will be to restring, to pitch raise the piano and see what happens. It also plays very strongly if you want to play strongly. I'm not sure if in, on the video that's going to sound good because it might distort the sound, sorry about that. So it has plenty of power but also huge delicacy. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much for listening. If you have a Blutner grand piano you'd like the action converted, then please let us know. Um, we'd, we'd be delighted to try and help you. Please write to info at robertspianos.com.